Hello, this is Christian. This episode, we're going to look at model. This model, I will break into um, two parts. This part one here, we're just going to focus on the RAM data, nothing from database or any text files, anything like that. In a separate video in the future, we're going to create some databases so we do the, uh, the other part, okay? So uh, models are really just data. It can be anything, right? Any from a text file, RAM, and so forth. Now, data are stored usually um, stored in the models folder. So here, if you expand the app folder and there it should be a models directory. And in here you see this a user.php file. This is again provided by a Laravel by default. So we're gonna create something similar to this. We're gonna create a class called maybe like project and then we'll add some data to that, okay? So um, before we begin, I want to also um, navigate to uh, my, um, Git repository over here. I have um, a data files directory. Inside here, I have a data.php and it has some really simple, just simple data in here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this data store here, just about for project data, and we're going to add it to our project. So in here, um, I'm going to close this now and I'm going to create inside the routes folder here, I'll create another directory here. We call it data file, just like down there. And inside here, I'm gonna create a new file called data.php. And then I'm gonna dump right in here. Okay, so this is our data store for now. And I'm gonna um, make sure it's PHP. So I'm not going to load this you know, uh, object or this array to the view. I'm gonna create a class for it. And then we're going to enter, we're going to create an instance of each of these objects as a class object. Okay. So before we do that, though, um, notice that in the models class uh, folder, you can create a model in here yourself manually if you want to. You can just copy this and, and make some changes. But I'm going to show you how we can do that automatically. Well, not everything, but um, using the interface down here. Okay. So go to the kind of man terminal, control J takes you there. Again, make sure you inside the your application here and uh, run this command. So PHP artisan make colon model and then space, and give it a name of the model. The name here is the name of the class, also the name of your file. So for me, I'm gonna call it project singular because the classes are usually singular and just hit enter, right? So what that will happen is that if you look at the models folder over here, you see that it created a project.php file. If you go in that file, let me go, let me analyze this for a second now. You see that it added some, you know, uh, stuff in there for us already ready to go. Okay, it created a project class. The caveat is that your class name should be the same name as your file when you use it in this context, okay? Um, otherwise, you're gonna have some some problem issues later on. So, so usually use the same class as the same file. Kind of follow Java's convention of naming your classes and files. Although in PHP, it doesn't want to be quite that, but in this case, it does matter. Um, I just want to point that out. All right. So in here, this class here is going to store the data fields of these data. So we have four of them, right? The ID, title, description, and URL. I'm just gonna create a really simple class. I'll keep whatever it, it provides here. And then we'll just add to that, um, you know, the data fields and, and things like that, okay? So I'm going to add a, I'll make everything public for now, just make it simple. Um, the ID field, public um, title, uh, description, and then the URL. Okay, so, that's good. And I'll create another constructor here just so that I can use it. And it's called under under construct. This is the constructor. The data fields will be the same as those. Title, description, and URL. Okay, so in here I'm going to just you know update them. This title equal to title and um, actually ID. I'll switch those. Kind of make it look nice. Uh, description is equal to description. 
and then this that URL is put in URL. Okay, so that is my class um, template. And usually you create, you know, using private, then you create getters and setters for this. But for now, this is good enough. All right, so use this model to create data. Notice that it uses a namespace called app slash models. Now this namespace is important because we're going to use this namespace so we can access this class called project in our code. So now I'm gonna go over to the data file and over here is where we're going to uh, use that uh, namespace. So on the very top here, I'm gonna use use app slash model. And once you use the namespace, then I have access to that, but then what is the exact class call? It's called project, which is again, the same name as my project file. So app models, and then here slash project, okay? And again, the same name, right? So use that, use that rule. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to create a for loop to create an object of these four records, right? It takes the ID and title and so forth. I'm here for, uh, I used the for each just to make it really quicker. Um, each of the data is a constant in this case, as um, we'll call it D, just to make it short. Uh, let's see, well, project data, I'm sorry, project data as, let me as data is fine. Okay, and then I'm going to create a variable called project, plural. It's an array that's going to be assigned with a new project. And I pass in here the ID, which is going to be coming from the data of um, ID. The second is the data title. And then data description. Good. And one more data of URL. Okay. So and the rule of you know PHP, when you create an object, you, pa you pass it to an array, you don't really have to push it to that. You could use the push function if you want to do that, but this is a quick way to do that and it will automatically append to the end of that array, right? Very nice, very beautifully in, in, in PHP. Now, so I should have now created a project called projects has a full content. Now, the next thing is I'm going to import this in when included into the web um, routes over here. And I'll do that at the very top here. Um, you can do, do the inside here if you want to, uh, wherever you want to do it, but I'll make it in the, in the space up here so it's available in, everywhere in, in this file. I use the include, and it's coming from the data files, and it's called data.php. And because my variable is really just a, um, you know, a regular variable, not a constant, I don't have to import it. I don't have to create use and things like that, right? Otherwise, you would have to you can use it, but that is enough. So I'm basically I'm exposing everything there to this place and makes some code a little bit nice. Now I'm gonna pass this data over to the portfolio over here. As you can see, we created a very simple portfolio here. And uh, if you go to the view, let's open that portfolio view right um, in here. This is the one that we created earlier. Okay, so it has nothing here yet. Before we do that, let's go and run the application first. I forgot about that. Um, let's do a uh, PHP artisan serve, again, port number 8,000. As you can see, there are no errors. If there are any errors, it will throw an error right here, okay? I should have done it earlier, but um, as far as I go, there's no error at this point. And go ahead and launch the site just to make sure that it actually loads. Here we go. All right. And here in the portfolio, as you can see, we had, um, okay, we probably didn't have the URL correctly here, but it's just not found. We'll figure out why. But I should load this URL here, okay? All right, so let's go back into the code again. And I'm gonna close this for now. And then in my web file, um, oh yeah, because we were playing with this, you know, data here, right? So I'm gonna delete this. IDs, I don't need the ID here for now. This was just testing earlier on. And then here, the title will keep, 
are going to remove this information. And in their place, we're going to create a variable called projects. And that should point to the projects variable we created inside the data uh, PHP file. Now, this is the one that's going to be passed over. But you will see that it's not recognized because if you mouse over that, it would say it's not verified. It's not available. Okay, when you do this because your variable is created outside here, you need to include that inside your function. Uh, if you don't do this, you could also move this and put it inside here like this. So once you do that, as you can see, it resolves the problem, right? Um, but if you want to use it somewhere else, then you have to keep doing that, right? So instead of doing that way, leave it as it was. And then this function here, you can use a, uh, a directive or function called use, and then you pass to the use function the name of the variable you want to pass to it. So in this case, it's projects. Okay? Because it's in a global space here, um, PHP has a really strict rule that in order to use a global variable, you must either use the globals um, uh, super global keyword or the global keyword to make it local to that particular function. And this is a callback function, so it's really tricky to do that. Um, and so in this way, the best way is to use the use function to pass any variable to that. And so now it should be local to this function now. And then once you pass this data over to the portfolio, now we have access to that information, okay? And um, so over here, we are then going to use a loop to loop through all the four uh, uh, projects and, and show them here. Uh, just so, so that it works, we can quickly just see how that works in here. So I will use here the for each again. Okay, as you can see, it has really nice uh, syntax to help us already. The collection is called projects. And each item will be, um, since we're just gonna, you know, interested in the actual project itself. And the, so I'll just keep the item as item, okay? Or actually you can call it projects. Maybe it makes more sense. And I mean, type project here. Project as project. So, so for each project, we're going to do something. And again, make sure you don't have too many ampersand in the front. And for now, I'm just gonna print the project Idle. Okay, so well, you can use the arrow now because these are data fields. I'm just going to print that, and you should see four of them in here. I'll make a br just to, to see that it's actually working. Save. Now go back to the browser and refresh this page. And here we go. We see the four projects here. Pretty good. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a table and make it a little bit nice. And I went ahead and already Google for the table and bootstrap. So we're going to modify this a little bit. Um, to make it a little bit nice, right? So on the table over here on the bootstrap, you can search for it. I want to use, um, this is fine, maybe something like a little bit more interactive. Um, uh, this one's good too. Yeah, this is fine too, the straight one. Um, or let's see, oh, the black was pretty cool. Um, I like, I like, oh, this is pretty good too. Um, let's go with the stripe. Okay, I like the stripe. It looks kind of nice. So basically, I copy. I'm going to copy um, the table here, and let's see. That's just for everything here for now. Okay, copy the whole table here, and go back to your code. And we're going to put uh, for now right in here. We need to split where and where. So this is the repeating part. That means that the T body and it goes in there, right? So this part here will go to the top. I'm gonna to move that to the top, right? Before the loop. And then the loop takes place. Actually, the T-body also needs to go above here. And then this is the repeating part from here to here. I don't need these guys. I'm just gonna close it right here, T-body. All right, so this part will go inside the loop right in here. Okay, and um, <clears throat> again, just right-click and format. Make it a little bit nice. Perfect. Now, hang exactly four fields. Perfect. Here, I will put um, the ID for the project ID. This is the project title. Um, let's see, description. And then this is the link of the URL. Okay. 
And here, this is going to be the project ID. And I'll copy this and I'll paste it right down here. This will be placed with the other ones. This is the title, uh, description. Then this is the URL. Well, do you, I want to have a link. Um, I want to go to a link. So A, which ref is going to go to um, that URL. And it's going to end right here. Um, target is going to be blank. This is, again, just some fictitious sites, OK? Not real sites. And I'm going to copy this again to display the URL to the table. OK. Um, yeah, that looks good. Now, because this is Bootstrap, it's not going to work until we actually load the Bootstrap library. But for now, I just want to see that it does work on the browser first. So let's go back here and load the page again. And you can see they're all here, right? Very, very nice. Um, now let's go ahead and load Bootstrap into our application. So if we have to go back over to the Bootstrap page, I believe you go to the very um, top. Um, you know what? One more thing before I go. I like the, the black heading here for um, this table. So I'm going to put here table dark. I think that's what it is. Table dark for the heading. Let me see. Um, yeah, table dark. Yes. Let's, let's try that. Table dark and to the T head section. Okay. T head, add a class call table dark. We'll see. All right, so now let's go back and add our bootstrap. If you go to the get started, and these are the things that you need to add. So just copy this link right here, go to the application and go into the master file, right? And the views uh, master layout right here, we're gonna add right above our CSS. And then we're gonna also include the JavaScript to make it work so down here. Again, just click a little copy here, copy to the, the clipboard, go back, and then put, I'm gonna put it right below down here just in case, make sure it, it loads everything correctly. And save this file, right? And then you can close that. Now, if you go to the browser and review your page, it should now load Bootstrap. Okay, so there we go, perfect, right? Kind of nice here. Um, I lost the footer navigation down here or link is still too low, we're gonna fix that a little bit. Um, but so far, so good. Uh, yeah. And uh, maybe I'll put another another uh, message right below the project here. OK, so let's fix the footer. And maybe look, look, add some room a little bit to the navigation here. Otherwise, I think so far, it's pretty good. So let's go over here. Um, in the, let's see, in the CSS, I think that's where we're going to fix it. CSS here, not inside the public directory. Um, so the footer, it was kind of low. Um, let's turn off the height here. I probably don't need to hide anymore. Again, just control enter. I mean, control question mark will give you the comment. Let's turn that off. The, the main, we'll keep the main, uh, the navigation. I don't have the nav. Um, let's see again. Let's see F12, this is what it looks like, the navigation. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I don't have I don't have a nav tab. I just want to add some some margin. Like, uh, let's see, maybe the top margin, the ten pixel. Um, make it somehow. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. The footer area. We're gonna also move that added. Uh, so if you remove the height, it should be it should be fine. Okay, so here we go. We updated the footer already. And navigation, I think it's okay, but you can add a little bit more padding if you want to. Um, but not only that, it's a little bit short. I wanna make it a little bit wider. And right now I think it's set to like 50 pixels. Um, I'm gonna modify that just one quick uh, magnification here on your 50%. I'll make it like 80%. Here, the navigation, I'm gonna add a new one here for the nav, I didn't have that one here, but I'm gonna just add it so that it has a, um, a margin top. 
be, I don't know, 10 pixel. I think that should uh, have some room to the top. And uh, I think that's pretty good. So let's save that and load one more time. And there you go, perfect. All right, I think that's good enough. Again, if you want to add another one, maybe you could, this one has nothing to do with um, thing, but maybe I want to add another, um, you know, data right below here to say like a, you can close, use a caption um, or I don't know, I'll use an H3 for now. Like uh, following some projects. Oh. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, that's it for this video. And again, very simple how we pass data model to the site here. And using loop, I'm able to display information just very easy like that using objects. Okay. So in the next video, in the future video, we're going to add some data kind of similar to this, but we will be coming directly from a database system. So thanks for watching. Any questions, please let me know.